Well, while investigators are still looking into who is responsible for those three unsolved cases in Brooklyn or if they're even connected, research has shown serial killings overall are on the decline. At their peak in the 1980s, nearly 770 first-time serial killers were identified. But fast forward three decades later, by the 2010s, that number was down to 117. So joining me now with more insight into why we're seeing this uh, or less of these types of crimes, let's bring in criminologist, Dr. Debbie Goodman, who is also an author. Always great to talk to you, Dr. Goodman. Um, why do you think it is? Why is it that are there really fewer serial killers or is it just that there's more technology that kind of prevents them from doing this? Right. Um, good afternoon, Nicole. Always a pleasure to join you. So I would say yes and yes. Um, we have what we call crime trends. So that's something that I follow day to day within the weeks, the months and the years. And you're absolutely on point with the graphic that we had a heightened level of serial killings in the decades of what the screen is showing. Now it's, it's dissipating and on the downward trend, which is good news and due in large part, I believe to the um, advances, the sophistication, the levels of intellect in our own field of criminal justice to include the sciences, the DNA, the technology, their surveillance. Um, but there is a however to that statement. And I would share that my concern right now, although we are seeing this decline in the serial killings, we are indeed seeing an uptick in the mass murders. So just to again um, remind our viewers of the distinction when we're talking about serial killing, we're talking about three or more murders over a period of time, different locations. But the mass murder category still with the number of the three or more, but at the one location at the same time. And in my research, and, and I can present to the viewers, uh, just in the last three years, the uptick is, is a concern. We had um, in our country in 2020, 610 mass murders. In 2021, 690. 2022, 647. And as of today, just up until most recent, we're not even done with the calendar year, of course, of 2023, but we're looking at 327 mass murders. Mm -hmm. So these are the types of crime trends. We may see a decline in one category, yet upticks in others. All right. And I want to talk to you about uh, the mass murders there as well. Uh, but first, I want to go back to that number that I said at the top of this. In the 1980s, nearly 770 identified uh, serial killers, or at least first time. And then by the 2010s, that number, you know, down to 117. Is there a world, do you think, Dr. Goodman, where we essentially eradicate serial killers? Well, I think what happens, Nicole, is just even in terms of decision making and time frames of these individuals, you know, people tend to, let's call it, age out of crime. We know that the demographic historically of serial killers is anywhere from age 20 to 40. But as they get older, they're not necessarily going to participate, right? And also we know that these are individuals, they're controlling, they're cold, and they're consistent. So they want to control everything. They're cold, they have zero empathy or remorse. And then the consistency is actually very important for law enforcement because they tend to be consistent in how they kill, who they select, their type of methodology, if you will. So I don't want to just completely say that it's gone forever. The numbers are good and we're encouraged, but I am concerned about the uptick in, in this other category. All right, so, so we saw that drop uh, over those three decades. So my question for you, Dr. Debbie, so people who are serial killers, it's hard to understand how they're defined, right? But let's say someone who has the propensity to be a serial killer or who has the gene or whatever it is that makes someone a serial killer, if they're not killing, if we see these numbers declining, are these same people instead doing something else? Does that make sense? It sure does, and it's a great question. So I would say no to that. They've just simply decided they've, they've gotten older or now they've uh, flipped the switch, if you will. They want to be part of mainstream society. Because remember, Nicole, it's shockingly enough, 
many of these individuals can vacillate, let's say, between um, normal mainstream society, right? Meaning they have families, they are husbands or fathers or boyfriends, they go to jobs, and yet they participate in the most atrocious and astonishing of crimes. So I think a decision is made even among them, especially if they've gone a long time without getting caught, that they've just decided to uh, to retire, if you will, from this horrendous behavior. Interesting. All right. Well, Dr. Good, my, my, my last question for you here. Is there something to say about the copycat nature of criminals, just of humans maybe in general? Because, you know, we saw that surge of serial killers in decades past. Now there's this surge in mass killings, specifically mass shooters. Is this really a matter of this kind of copycat behavior, something that makes people see a crime, see violence perpetrated and say, you know what, I want, I want to do that? Yes, Nicole, I, I would agree with, with your premise and your concept, and, and it has been proven um, to where individuals who, let's say, would already have a propensity toward violent thoughts, thinking about violence, when they see other individuals participating, it can actually lead to um, what I refer to as the contagion effect. Now they feel that this individual is in the spotlight. They too want to be in a spotlight. They've done their research, their homework. They think they can do this. So it's, it's definitely something real and valid. Well, criminologist, criminal profiler, author, Dr. Debbie Goodman, always appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.